Hey everyone, it's Nadia from Leah Dia Designs and I'm back with another tutorial. I apologize for my voice today. I'm just getting over a cold. So, um, but I wanted to show you guys how I made this beautiful orchid clock. It was a wedding present for my cousin. And, uh, so the first thing I did is I had a wooden base that I primed with some acrylic paint and then I poured white resin over and then once it was cured I actually used a dry erase marker to sketch out the design that I wanted to um, to have on the piece here so and as you can see now what I'm doing is I'm taking my acrylic outliner and I am just basically tracing out the design in the outliner and this is in a silver color so I'm just going to carefully go over that uh, my sketches are always pretty rough, so then I just kind of finalize it, you know, when I'm painting, so. And as many of you know, I love this product because it really does a wonderful job at creating a stained glass look because the, uh, the relief is just, it has just such dimension to it. So this way it's, um, it actually also makes it a lot easier to, uh, to paint inside the lines. When I, if you just use regular acrylic paint, you're generally not going to get that raised edge. And then because I use dry erase marker, um, it's a lot easier now to just clear out um, any of those lines just using a dry brush. You could wash it as well, um, but I found that the dry brush worked perfectly. So there we go. We have our all of our marker gone now. And the next step is to fill in our flower, our orchids actually. So, um, I, you want my cousin's favorite flowers are these blue and purple ones. So it was actually her wedding flower. So I really wanted to, um, you know, capture the vibrancy of those colors, uh, on this clock. So I ended up mixing just, if you've been watching me for a while, you know, this mixture, I just use a uh, gloss varnish and I mix my colors with different mica powders and things like that to get the colors that I want. So here I wanted to have kind of that dark purple and then that kind of more of a magenta purple and then uh, a light blue. So, and then when you kind of mix these, you know, you kind of have to do your own blending uh, within the flower petals and it does soften up. So you might see that it looks like the lines are a little bit more or the blending is a little bit more harsh. Um, while I'm painting here, but once uh, once it all starts to settle and dry, you can see even on the upper flowers here that the colors start to blend a little bit more. So it kind of softens the look. You could use other options for colors here as well. You could use uh, stained glass paints by uh, Pebio has them. You could also use pigment uh, dyes or uh, for those of you who like alcohol inks, that's a possibility too. I don't use them, so I don't know how well they'd work here. I really like the pearlescent look of um, of the mica powders with uh, with the gloss varnish in these um, for these designs. So I do have another video that does show other painting options. Um, I'll try to remember to link it in the description below, as well if you're looking for you know, um, other videos of mine that have this, uh, similar techniques, um, but maybe have a more involved, uh, kind of tutorial. I'll try to link a couple of those below as well, <laughs> as well. Sorry. <laughs> Once I've done the flowers, the next thing I do is I just wanted to add a little bit of color to the background because I did want this to kind of look like a stained glass piece. So I do have those lines in the background that kind of show like they're pieces of, um, you know, different fragments of glass. And I just like to add a little bit of color in the back there, but subtle. So obviously our flowers are still our main focus. So we have our light blue, we have a light green, and then we also have um, kind of like a... Um, iridescent pearl kind of color and I added some glitter in the center uh, just because I wanted to have a little bit of extra um, just 
something different in the middle once the dial goes on. So once that's all nice and dry, uh, it probably takes about six or eight hours. I probably left it overnight. Then you can go ahead and add the top coat of resin in here. I just, I wanted to go really slowly because there's a lot of details here for, uh, to make sure that we, the resin gets into. So I just want to go really slowly and add it as needed in different areas. And I typically do two top coats for my clocks. Um, so, but you can choose if one or two is enough. So, so once I finish that, I had, oh, I didn't mention, I also had painted the sides. I don't know if you could see that. You might see it later on in the video. I painted the sides silver. So once this is all done, then I'm able to just kind of use a torch and quickly get rid of any micro bubbles. And then I'll let that cure overnight. And I'll get a little shot here of how this looks right after the resin was poured on it. It's looking pretty nice already. Just love how the colors just pop. Just looks amazing. So, and then we'll just quickly go through the last bits of assembling the clock, just adding the hands, and then we are all done. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Again, I apologize for my voice. I hope to be better next week, and I will see you then. Take care. Thanks so much. Um, don't forget to subscribe and share and comment. And